breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. All right, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of Brainstorming with the Docs. I'm Dr. Colby Condos, my co-host, Dr. Glenn Harrison. Hey. How's it going, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm it's been like um, a whole week since I talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has been a whole week since I talked to you. Yes, it's been uh, it's been good. It's uh, I've done some interesting things this this weekend. This weekend, so I went out to the the Sturgis Rally. So that was fun um, went for a bike ride. There was a whole lot of people there, and you know, I was supposed to go with a friend of mine, but he couldn't cross the border because of you know the border restrictions right now. And I was like, I was feeling. I feel very confident to go myself, you know, you know, seven hour drive away and didn't know anybody there, but you know, I was there a very short period of time and, uh, I knew a whole bunch of people, my best friends instantly, <laughs> just didn't yeah, right? made some hour. new friends. Mm -hmm. So that kind of leads us to what we're talking about today. Confidence. Yeah. So we're talking about confidence. If this is your first time watching or listening to the podcast and you find value in this content, Please hit like and subscribe and turn on notifications because we're going to continue to roll out health or wellness related content each and every week. Um, so without further ado, let's talk about confidence. How confident yes. are you? Well, I don't Apparently know. very confident because you got a bunch of new friends. Apparently, yeah. I'm I've feeling less confident all... <laughs> because you're my only friend and now I, <laughs> and now you have a bunch of other friends. <laughs> Yes. Well, when we were coming up with this, this topic and, you know, I, I know we, we talked about having courage, why courage is needed for health, but um, why health is required for confidence. Um, it, it, you can't be confident without health. That's the overall story, but to try to break it down a little bit more, um, you know, confidence isn't just about, you know, walking to a room, walking into a room and owning it. Um, but, but there's different types. Want to jump into some of what these different types are? Yeah. Well, when we were spitballing about this, I was like, you know, we're talking about it. It's like you can be confident in your appearance. You know, mm -hmm. that's like you put on a suit and you're like, oh, dang, I look good. Yep. I'm <laughs> feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling professional, feeling like I own this stuff today. I think you can be confident in your ability, right? You want, if you're going to go in for surgery, you want a sur surgeon that's very confident in his ability um, or doc any doctor, any, any professional like that. You want someone who's confident in themselves. Um, not necessarily cocky, but you want someone who knows how to do their job and knows how to do their job well. And then confident in your performance. Um, you know, I hope that the person that's helping me manage my money is really confident in their performance. So eventually I can retire. Right. That's so right. I think that it's important to have confidence in different facets of your life, you know, whether it's appearance or ability or performance. But the and real question is, is, is your health impacting any of those? That that's exactly right. And, and I think it's impossible to to be confident in in any of those appearance ability or performance if your health is trashed if it's a liability right if it's a liability mm -hmm. so you can't put on the fancy suit and look awesome and feel super confident if you don't have enough energy to do so or you know focused. or if you can't fit into your suit anymore or take your pick for any any one of those reasons so that's right that's right. So how does good health improve your confidence? Yeah. So I think that it makes you able to process and perform tasks more efficiently and quickly, right? Um, when you can efficient or when you can efficiently and quickly and with, you know, with an ample amounts of energy, you get more stuff done. That's right. Um, and you, and you don't have this burden of, of, of a symptom whether right. that's a pain or an exhaustion or uh, insecurity, which is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, lack of confidence is insecurity. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but any of these burdens sitting on your shoulders, migraines, uh, we could go on and on and on with health related symptoms. That's a burden that's weighing us down and, and it distracts us. We're just trying to get through the day and, and the, the burden of sickness is, is kind of destroying our, our capability and we have to get through two things in the day. We have to get through our workday plus that burden. And it's very hard right. to be confident to even to know if we're going to have enough steam to get through our day if we're struggling with a health issue. Right. And then you're not confident you're going to get your tasks done or you're not going to do that task to the best of your ability. Right. That's There's right. physical or whatever limitations. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, my confidence is in the pot because, you know, I didn't, I did not do my best work. I mean, we've all had that day mm -hmm. where, you know, you're 
doing something and you're like, oh, I'm just so tired. I'm this is definitely not the best work I've ever done. That's um, right. You know? That's right. And and when when health when health starts to creep in or health problems start to start to, to creep in, if it's very a specific health problem, which it kind of always is, if it's if it's a lack of energy, well, then we're worried about get, being able to get through the day and not falling asleep at our workstation, if that's a thing for some people, I guess it is, uh, or maybe we're driving, maybe we're a driver, but we have a hard time to stay awake. There's going to be insecurities and a lack of confidence that we can do the job but there's, there's fear, there's risks of, of car accidents. I've actually had patients like this. Uh, they, they're, they're, they're insecure. They don't have the confidence that they can do their job as a driver, but they need to put food on their table. So they're living in this constant fear. Yeah. So I think that basically what we've just broken down is, you know, your health can affect your ability to do your job. It can affect your performance. And then it also can affect, you know, it can affect your mood or your psyche, right? That's if right. you're not able to do all, do all those facets of your job or, 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 or anything interact within your day-to-day -day life. You know, if you're not confident walking, you know, if you're, you know, not in the best physical activity in one of your or physical fitness, one of your buddies asks you to play, you know, basketball, are you going to be as confident if you're out of shape as you, as you would be if you were in shape, you know, or, Hey, let's go downhill skiing. Cause we live in Colorado. Well, I don't really feel confident in my ability because I'm a little bit out of shape. I haven't been taking my fitness as well. I haven't been mm -hmm. eating very good. I put on some weight. I'm not going to go. That's so right. Yes. Yeah, so you withdraw from your life. Of your health. Yeah. Of your yeah, life, you know, you withdraw from life and then, and, and a lack of, um, uh, in, uh, inaction creates insecurities and action creates confidence. But right. if you if you aren't able to deliver that action to 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 act to do the things you want to do, well, you know, insecurities are the first things that creep in. And some things sometimes things can be a lot more aggressive or more bold. You know, I had had a client uh, was a nurse in uh, in in Colorado here, worked at emergency and emergency. There's different levels, tiers of emergency uh, hospitals, and um, and you know, there's life or death on the line. And this individual was so exhausted and you know, there's there a lot going on in this person's life, but like home life, but her, the health was just deteriorating more and more and more. And it was affecting focus and concentration, a lot of brain fog. This individual was brilliant, absolutely brilliant individual. And, um, they, they were starting to look over their shoulders because their colleagues were looking over their shoulders when they're trying to resuscitate a, another human that's coming in with bullet wounds and stab uh, stab wounds and trying to manually resus, res, 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 resuscitate resuscitate <laughs> these individuals when there's you know you think there'd be so much adrenaline pumping through uh, through their you know through their bloodstream that it would be impossible to have brain fog now this person was so depleted and as as qualified as this individual was and as intelligent as this individual was this individual is also very insecure, almost leaving their job because of fear Lack of confidence. And the coworkers were looking over their shoulder to make sure there was no mistakes because there's life's on the line. But once this individual's health started to improve and improve and improve, well, what happened? It wasn't just being more confident in their job. This individual was able to take on more courses and take and, and, and take, get higher, you know, uh, I guess more and more credentials to be able to do more and more aggressive things, more and more significant things in the whole clinic setting. So you can see somebody who has it all has everything they need, but if they don't have their health, um, all their confidence in their career can disappear. That's yeah. Just, just one example. I know you've probably had cases like that where you see, yeah, I actually had one where they were like the CEO of a company and actually were thinking about stepping down because they felt like they were unable they weren't and this is word for word what they said when they came in i'm not confident that i can do what's best for not only me but my employees and my company and when i asked why they told me you know i have low energy i can't concentrate um and when we ran the blood work they were actually di like pre-diabetic um had blood sugar all over the place type of stuff when we started correcting those uh, they came back in. They're like, I really appreciate this. This has been like a huge kick in the butt. I've actually encouraged all my employees to now start taking like more uh, proactive approaches to their health. We've started looking into setting up different types of savings plans for health stuff. Um, and it all came down to like her health was 
dramatically impacting her ability to do her job and do her job well. And when she was, when she started noticing the mistakes and then there was, you know, the talking about, oh, they've lost, you know, we blew this, we did this, we did this. And she lost her confidence. And in an indirect way, her health impacted the confidence of her employees as well. Mm. You know, so you look at it, it's really kind of cyclical. Your health plays into every facet of your life, you know, whether that's confidence in your ability to perform the task, your ability to get it done, your, you know, your appearance, you know, your, your performance, all this stuff, your health is, is your, in yeah, our individual health affects influences how we see ourselves, mm -hmm. how we see ourselves determines our level of confidence. And there's something yes. gnawing at us and, and deteriorating us. Cause that's what it is. We know that we feel it, we see it, we experience it. And, and, and how could we be confident in our abilities or actions or, you know, in society? Um, it, and then you look at it too. And in this spe like specific case, not only did her health impact her, but it also impacted the confidence of the other ones around her. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have a job? Are oh, yes. we going to, you know, is, is the company going to go? This is, individual are, was able to lead again. Yes. So, and be confident in their actions. And, and that's right. Else. And if, yeah, we, it's easy to, it's easy to follow someone who's confident in uh, a confident leader. And, and, you know, when we we're talking about this topic, I, I didn't even realize but the same thing happened to me back in the day when I was uh, making money to pay for school, I worked in the mining industry. I was a laborer and I was, um, I was 19 years old and I injured my back so significantly that, um, well, how can you do a laborer's job if your back is injured? And, um, and it really, really created insecurity because there were some days that were more demanding than others. And you could kind of predict what the next day you were going into and what those tasks would be. And I remember there were many of nights that I was, I, you know, I wasn't sleeping because I was so scared as a young, as a young kid worried about, am I going to be able to deliver and am I going to be able to keep my job? And then if I can't keep my job and I get sent home, because we got to remember we weren't by town. <laughs> there was an airplane ride out of the forest <laughs> to get to a hospital and there wasn't much work back then. So if you, even if you did get, well, what are they going to give you? They give you a bunch of drugs and then you're going to be off. And then you would get, get out of your crew because we had crews and then you wouldn't get the spot again. Right. Cause I didn't have any seniority. I was just a, a grunt. I lived with that fear for a long, long time. And I did everything in my power to try to maintain my, my, my function because I was terrified. If I couldn't work, I couldn't pay for school. If I couldn't pay for school, what, what would I have then? So it's a, it's a big deal. And when you have your confidence in what you're doing in life, your whole world opens up. You socialize with people you never would before. You apply for jobs you never would before. You'll talk to people you never would before. You will try new things you never did before. It, it, it's really allowing people to interact with the world in a way that they never once thought they could because they lived in fear. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Your health is everything. Yeah. You know, it, it plays into everything. So if you're not taking a proactive approach about it, strongly suggest and implore you to do so because it is right. going to pay dividends exponentially. That's right. Yeah. So, so if you want confidence, just focus on your health and it'll that's right. show up. Right. <laughs> Look good, feel good, perform good. Right. That's right. There you go. So if you guys got value out of this content and you'd like to, you know, receive notifications about when new content like this comes out again, please hit like, and subscribe and turn on the no notification bell and share this information with friends, family, and loved ones. If you guys would like to reach out to us directly, our, email associated with the podcast is info at brainstorming with the you can get a lot of info at our websites, which are northlakeschiropractic.com or drgharrison.com. And yeah, you can reach out to us there. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's it. So until next time, right. buddy, that sounds good. Stay confident. All right, buddy. See you later. Bye-bye.